welcome back we're going to move on to looking at angles in parallel lines for the last two days of this week so we're going to bring all of our angles work together to allow you to access some really hard problem solving questions what we're going to do is talk about three different types of angles it's important to remember that these angles can exist outside of parallel lines but they are very special and have special properties when they're within parallel lines so before we really dig into the angles, we need to remember what parallel lines really are. Parallel lines are two lines that will never ever touch. They have the same gradient. That means they will basically like train tracks stay the same distance apart forever and ever. They will never ever cross. So if we're looking at these pairs of li these lines, we can pair them up by looking at any of them that would, in theory, fit either side of a ruler and never ever touch. That means that our pink and purple are parallel. If we looked at the red one, quite clearly they're cro it's crossing lots of them, the pink, the purple, the blue and the green. But if we move our ruler, we can see really nicely that that yellow line is parallel to it. So we've got red and yellow, also parallel. And last but not least, we have the blue line, which crosses through lots of them, but not green, and it's parallel to that green one there. So blue and green are also parallel. So parallel lines are an equal fixed distance apart and will never meet. So they're always the same distance away from each other and never ever meet. It's another reminder of that definition. This means we can now move on to something called alternate angles. Alternate angles are created when you are looking in between parallel lines and then this line here is called a transversal. Alternate angles are the ones that are on opposite sides of the transversal but in relatively the same position. So we can see this already with these two X's and these two Y's they are inside the lines in both cases but they are on opposite sides of the transversal this actually means that we can extend this kind of thinking to um, use our vertically opposite angles which is something that we've not covered explicitly here vertically opposite angles look something like this and they are equal vertically in this case means that they are meeting at a point at a vertex so this vertex this point that they're meeting at and the lines go through that two straight lines vertically opposite we can use this in each one of these uh, vertices that we have here and we can come up with an X over here, a Y over there, an X over here and a Y over there. So these are the ones that we call interior. They are alternate interior angles because they are within the lines. However, we can also have these ones on the outside to consider. And these X and Ys are also considered to be alternate, but slightly harder to spot. And these are exterior. So they're alternate interior and alternate exterior angles. I'm just going to redraw this diagram very very quickly so I can show you the kind of patterns that we're looking for here so 
if I was to draw a set of parallel lines, we can actually just look for a Z shape to kind of identify these, particularly for the interior angles. So those two being the same, we could reverse that Z shape if we wanted to. And that Z shape could come this way instead and give us those. So they are relatively to each other on the inside here of that Z shape in either direction. There is lots of temptation here then to call them Z angles, but the Z just helps us to find them. It's important that we remember that these are called alternate angles. Alternate angles in parallel lines are equal. So alternate angles are equal would be the answer that you had to give. Most of the time you are looking for the interior ones. There's lots of other rules that we can obviously use, like the fact that you can find the interior and then vertically opposite. Um, but you could just use um, for the exterior ones just the fact that they're alternate because it's still valid. They're in the same position on the outside but on opposite sides of the transversal. You were asked to have a look at um, this diagram. Now, I've added a few extra little parts here to make sure that we're looking um, at both the interior and exteriors just to push us a little bit further. So, if you haven't already, can you pause the video and try and find the alternate interior angles in this diagram? Okay, I'm hoping that we've been able to find those very, very quickly. We should have found that if we were to, in effect, draw a Z shape in here, we can see this U and S are very similar to each other. So U and S is one of them. And then if we did the same, but in reverse, we would get the T and the R. So T and R are also alternate interior angles. We can build on this and try and find those exterior pairs. If you haven't already, can you pause the video and try to find these now? Okay, as we did before, I'm going to draw in those Z's because I do think they're helpful. So this Z this way. But actually what I'm looking for now is the bits that are on the points on the outside. So this is a V and a Q that are now exterior alternate angles. And if I reverse the zigzag as we did before, I end up with P and W on the points. So P and W are another pair of the exterior alternate angles put that back in focus there we go so remembering that we can have both interior and exterior is going to mean that we can really efficiently solve lots of problems without having to do two steps quite often our brains just look for the interior ones and that's fine but if you can remember that exterior one your efficiency will go up You are then asked to complete a couple of these questions for yourselves. Again, if you haven't already done so, can you please pause the video and try it now? Okay, first we are asked about the value of the letters A and B. If we look for an alternate angle here, we can find that A must be 48 degrees because alternate angles are equal. We know these lines are parallel because of the arrows that are on them here. B is slightly more complicated and there's two different ways that we can get that. I'm hoping that we can see really clearly that A and B are on a straight line. So actually A plus B is 180 degrees because they are on a straight line. 
This means that B must be 180 minus A, or 48 in this case, which gives us 132 degrees, and that's because angles on a straight line sum to 180. It's really important that we give as much information as possible in these reasons. In your mark scheme, these words are underlined. If we don't include those, you cannot get your answer marks. And quite often, if you get all of those, those reasons, that's still just one mark. So you need to be very clear with all of them. Let's try the next. Again, we're in a very similar position to last time in that if I draw my Z in, I can see an alternate angle here and here. So R here is 137 degrees. Again, because alternate angles are equal. We could do a very similar thing to what we did before to find um, S by looking at this angles on a straight line. But what I'm going to suggest is that we try something a little bit different and try and use those exterior angles that we saw before. If we were to look at a Z where this S is at the point, we're also looking at this angle here. So rather than this straight line, we could use this straight line over here. And so we could end up with saying 180 minus 137, which is going to give us 43 degrees, and that's because of angles on a straight line. which sum to 180. Now technically that could have been to find S down here, but we're doing it slightly differently because we found this one up here. I'm gonna label this one as 43. And then we can say that therefore S equals 43 degrees. And if we wanted to, we could then say that is because of alternate angles are equal. In this case, looking at the exterior angles actually made it slightly more complicated, um, but it is important that we consider that they're there for efficiencies later on. So here it wasn't the most efficient method, but it is useful. Okay, let's have a look at some more problems. If you haven't already tried this one, can you please pause the video and try it now? There are lots and lots of different ways to answer this question. So if we were to start with A, it kind of follows through that the, the letters might be done in the order that we need. Um, so A here um, is, if we look at that Z shape in this Z shape here, to be alternate to the 76. So A is 76 degrees, and that's because alternate angles are equal. Here we're not asked to give those reasons, but it's really good to get into the habit of doing that. Then if we're looking at B, B is on a straight line with A. So B is 180 take 76 or 104 degrees because of angles on a straight line sum to 180. C is slightly more difficult. It's very, very tempting to think that we can use these two lines as another set of parallel lines, but they, one, do not have arrows on them, and if we think about continuing them, they would definitely meet up here. So we can't use these, and therefore these are not relevant to finding C at the moment. So what I'm going to do is start trying to fill in any extra information that I can. If this angle here is 68, what I'm going to do is draw a Z with that in the corner of it. That means that this one here is also 68 degrees. And then from this point, we've got some angles on a straight line. So for C, 
I can do 180, take 68 degrees, which is going to give me 112 degrees, and that's because of alternate angles being equal and angles on a straight line. There are lots of different ways that you could have done this problem, but this one was the one that was the most efficient for our means at the moment. To practice your alternate angles, you need to be looking at clip 481. But actually today's lesson isn't over. We also need to recap one other type of angle in parallel lines. We're gonna look at corresponding angles. Again, remember that these angles can be called corresponding even if they're not in parallel lines, but the special property we're going to talk about only holds if the lines are parallel. Corresponding angles are um, different to the alternate angles in that they are on the same side of the transversal. So remember that your transversal is this line that crosses all of your parallel pairs. So we've got some parallel pairs in every single one of these diagrams. And instead of being on the opposite side of the transversal, we've actually got the angles on the same side and in the same relative position in that cross in the vertex. So these are always in the top left, these always in the top right, these in the bottom left and these in the bottom right. So all of these are corresponding angles. So they're on the same side and the same relative position. That is absolutely different to alternate because we're actually looking at them being in the same place on the cross rather than in the same place relative to the lines. So we're in the same place on the same side of the transversal. As you can see from the diagrams, these corresponding angles are equal in parallel lines. You were then asked to find some four the four pairs here of corresponding angles. If you haven't already done that, can you pause the video now and give that a go? Okay, I'm going to pick one of these angles to start off with. I'm going to pick this Q. I'm looking for an angle on the opposite vertex on my parallel lines that is in the same position. So if this is the vertex that I'm starting with, I want to look at this vertex next. I want it to be in the same relative position, so that one is going to be U. So Q and U are my corresponding angles here. I'm going to do the same for P, and because we've now got a point of reference it's even easier to see T. So P and T are also corresponding. This time I'm going to start from the bottom of the diagram. I'm going to start at the bottom vertex to find me W. And w is going to be corresponding to the angle here at R. So R and W are next. And last but not least, if we look at S, we've got V left over. So S and V are the next lot. Using what we know so far then, we were then asked to look at these questions to complete. If you haven't already done so, pause the video now and give them a go. Alright, let's look for some corresponding angles as these questions are kind of based on that premise. I've got one of the angles that is on this vertex. So actually, I can also use this vertex in the same position to find out that C is 61. 
and that's because corresponding angles are equal. From this point it should be really easy for us to find D because we can actually see that C and D are on a straight line. So D is 180, take 61, or 119 degrees because angles on a straight line sum to 180. Let's try the next one. We've got a really similar setup to the previous question here. So I'm going to start by looking at this vertex and see if I can find anything corresponding. Here I can then find out that M is 164, again because corresponding angles are equal. But this N is slightly different. There's a few different ways we can do this one. Um, but actually the quickest and maybe the most obvious is if we've remembered that vertically opposite angles are equal then we also have this one as 164. It's really important that you use the word vertically here because it tells us about this vertex that we're comparing it to. There are lots and lots of different ways that you could have done these questions. You could have filled in lots and lots of other um, angles. So for example, we could have filled in this one as a 61. We could have filled in this one as 119. Um, we could have used alternate angles to help us to find this one. We could have then used alternate angles here to help us to find this one. So there is no one way to kind of do these, but so long as you can explain your reasoning for every single angle you fill in, that's absolutely fine. And in an exam, you can even do that by popping your explanation on an arrow from the diagram, and that would also be accepted. We could have done the same kind of thing here, so this one's 164, we could have got that from the vertically opposite and then corresponding here. Uh, we could have used uh, this to get us 16 degrees for uh, these, because we can see these are all on straight lines as well. Um, using alternate or corresponding angles could have given us that these were 16s as well and then therefore that the others were 164. As I said, lots and lots of different ways to do them but the ones that I've got are the most efficient that I could see. So earlier on, I told you that you needed to work on clip 481 for alternate. For corresponding, you wanna be looking at 483. Before you move on to tomorrow's lesson, I really want you to make sure that you can get 70% on these questions. Once you've done that, or if you've got any issues, please make sure you've emailed us. Um, but once you've done that, that's basically all you need to do for today. So it's a nice bit of revision on some lovely angle properties. If you need us, do pop us an email. Otherwise, stay safe.